And I'll tell you, Kevin, yesterday I was in a, a supermarket. There's, there's no avoiding it uh, from time to time. And I was thanking every single uh, checkout person there. Um, I mean, they're, they're really like almost first responders. And, and it's got to be very difficult uh, for Cisco at this point for all your employees. But tell, tell us how you're, you're making out and, and logistically what's going on. Yeah, Joe, first of all, I want to thank you for having us on this morning and talking about the importance of the food supply chain in our country. Cisco plays a vital role in that supply chain. We're the largest food service distribution company in the industry. We serve the food away from home space, which is you know, restaurants, hospitals, colleges, schools, even prisons, entertainment venues, and, and the like. And as you just indicated, we're seeing a dramatic shift in our business. These are unprecedented times. Since Monday, when the social distancing uh, order was more clearly communicated to Americans, the good news is Americans are heeding that advice. It's good for us from a healthcare perspective. People are helping each other by practicing social distancing. The, the net effect of that, however, is obviously a significant reduction in traffic to restaurants. Uh, we, as well as the restaurants we serve, are working to pivot our business model. Restaurants are still allowed to do delivery to the home. and pick up at their restaurant locations. Uh, and we are working very hard to be able to help that smaller restaurant population that perhaps did not have the capabilities to do that on their own. We're stepping in to help them set up delivery services, set up websites that, that, so that they can continue to take orders. Uh, one of the reasons we're on today is uh, we are here in support of the National Restaurant Association, who's looking for the federal government to be able to help those small business owners that is why you know we're here. Uh, we have the financial stability. We have over $2 billion of cash on our balance sheet. We're not looking for any financial assistance. We are stable. We will weather this storm financially. It's that small American business owner, and there are millions of them that we're very worried about. This economy needs those companies. We need those employees to have jobs. And we're hopeful and thankful that the U.S. federal government can step in and help them at this critical time. Kevin, it just seems like if, if we were to get a some type of... Uh you know, just a, a miracle cure or something were to happen, and who knows, you know, how, how long that's going to take, or something significantly changed, and you were back to servicing restaurants that were reopened. I, I just, you know, it was an $82 stock. It's now uh, half that. The, the market must be anticipating a, a really long delay with lasting effects rather than uh, just something really temporary where, uh, you know, in two or three months you're back to, to full capacity. What do you think that is, and, and do you think the market has it wrong? Yeah, I, I can't predict, obviously, how deep the declines will be, nor for how long those declines will, will be. I would, however, agree with your, your your point there, which is we think there's been an overreaction in the stock market and most specifically an overreaction in our space. As I mentioned a moment ago, Joe, we are a very fundamentally financially strong company with over $2 billion of cash on our balance sheet. We are taking bold and dramatic actions to reduce our expense basis to match the volume reductions that we're seeing in the food away from home business. We are also pivoting our business model, as I mentioned earlier, to new sources of revenue. So the one main business that we don't serve today is that grocery store segment. As you indicated, uh, grocery stores are struggling to keep up with demand. We have the largest food service supply chain in the United States. We have the second largest private dedicated fleet in the United States. And I personally made phone calls to the CEOs of all of the major grocers in this country. and. They're very interested in understanding how Cisco can help them. We have already engaged with, from a business perspective to step in. We have trucks, we have drivers, we have food, and we can step in and really help these retail grocers fill their shelves. Americans need access to food. That food needs to be handled in a safe uh, manner uh, from a COVID-19 protection perspective. And these are just unprecedented times. Yes. We will snap back as a company. We will snap back very quickly. As restaurants reopen, people want to go out to eat. They want to be able to get out of their homes, and it's uh, it'll be to you know to be determined how long that takes. Yeah, I, I was going to ask you that whether why can't you switch quickly, or is it possible logistically to switch to the the, uh, the grocery chain? And I, yeah. it seems like you generate revenue. They need what you have, and and I, I can understand it, it. It would take some doing, but it seems like a, a match made in heaven. I think Becky Quick uh, has a question for you now, Kevin. Yeah, along those same lines, Joe, you know, Kevin, it's great that you are looking to kind of help in any way you can. Um, but so many of your businesses, from, from colleges, retail, entertainment, restaurants, all of them shutting down immediately, how many employees do you have right now? And are you keeping them on the payrolls as you see how you can redeploy them? 
Yeah, Becky, the, that's a great question. We have 69,000 employees that work at Cisco, and keeping them safe, keeping them employed is a top priority of mine personally and of our, our, of our leadership team. We have needed to flex down expenses, but these are things we can do that are uh, discretionary. We've canceled all travel, canceled all meetings. We've delayed um, all capital expenditure projects that are not mission critical. As it relates to our associates, uh, what we've worked through, and we think this is good for two reasons. One, it helps us practice social distancing, and two, it keeps our associates actively employed and working. We've gone to an A and a B work team schedule, where team A essentially works week one and week three of a given month. Team B works week two and week four of that given month. And in their off week, uh, we're working with our associates to keep them paid. So we're able to continue to pay our employees. They stay on our health insurance benefits, which is important to them and important to us. And we're here to weather this storm. We stand by our associates who are on that front line, uh, and we're here to serve them.